everyone. Welcome to another spoiler podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. No, I'm not. I'm Dan. <laughs> Yay, it's Dan's News. Hi, Dan. Hi, I'm not Dan Tory. I'm Dan's News. It, it, has been, it has been a while since you've been on the, uh, on the channel. Can, I, can I, I tell you I it's been exactly two years and one month since the yeah. Arkham City podcast went up? <laughs> well, I, I don't know why you're counting. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, so we we definitely wanted to come back and do one for Arkham Origins uh, since we did the one for Arkham City, and um, let's just go ahead and dive straight into it, Dan. Um, what were you expecting from this game, and did it deliver that? All right. Well, my friend was trying to make me really negative about it right out the gate once they announced it because it wasn't Rocksteady this time. It was it was uh, Warner Brothers uh, Montreal. Montreal, and yeah. um, it was kind of worrying because Arkham City came out, well, two years ago at this point. But it's, it's just like they didn't have Paul Dini. They didn't have Rocksteady. And it was like completely two different, completely team, different teams. And I was just like, mm. but my mindset going into it was as long as it, they just took everything they had in Arkham City and ported it over to a different game with a good story, I would be satisfied. Um, and so that's kind of what I was looking for going into this. I wasn't, I didn't have great expectations, but I was still pretty excited that there was a new Batman game and, and kind of a, a fresher take on the Arkham universe, I guess. Yeah. The thing I was really surprised by is how big it is. Yeah. Because when, when this got announced, um, like, like you said, I mean, everybody I talked to was, was kind of, was kind of down on it at first and, until we started seeing trailers and then it kind of light, lightened people up a little mm -hmm. bit, um, because the trailers looked, made it look fantastic. And, uh, and then we started hearing things like, you know, the, the city is going to be twice as big and I mean, you're the open world and stuff. And, yeah. and, uh, I don't think anybody expected that. Um, when, when we heard this was going to be a prequel and stuff like that and, Kevin Conroy had already leaked that there's gonna be a real Arkham 3. I figured that it was just gonna be this kind of like um, little try to satiate everybody's palates kind of game until the real Arkham 3 came out. Yeah. And so not only did I not expect anything from it, but I didn't think I really needed to. I was like, well, it's not it's not really important. It's it, And I think, um, you know, I'm not a big gamer, but I think a lot of origin titles are kind of like that, where where they're, they're like, they're sort of Sort of prequels and they're there just to kind of wet your palate until the real big thing comes yeah. out. Yeah. And um this managed to be a little more than that. Yeah, I think it stood out a bit more than than being just a you know straight up origin story or just kind of a filler sort of thing. I was afraid because what they do with video games sometimes is they'll trade between two different like studios where they have like in the Call of Duty series they have Treyarch and Infinity Ward so they can get one out every year. They, they switch between the two different studios so they have two years to work on a game. Um, it's the same thing with the Assassin's Creed games. Um, yeah. and, I, I, and those have gotten kind of bland at points where they're only adding one or two different things. And it's like, so that's what I was worried about with this. But yeah, I think story-wise, it definitely stood out more than I thought it was going to. Um, I, was, I was really excited about them kind of stepping away from the Joker a little bit and kind of featuring Black Mask at first. Um, but it seemed like kind of they definitely went in very Joker heavy midway through the game. Yeah, and I don't think they needed to do that. Yeah, um, I get I get why they did it. Um, and there was a lot of ambition here, which I commend. I, I don't think it uh, entirely succeeds at some of what it's attempting to do. Yeah. But I, I but I but I think that. Um, it's trying really hard to be cohesive. It wants to be a part of that story. Um, it doesn't want to just be this side thing that's not important. And uh, one of the things I thought it really had going for it was uh, using all of the locations from Arkham City, but getting to see them before they were condemned, decrepit buildings. Yeah, I, that that made it seem like smaller to me, though. I know it's I know it's a bigger. Oh, interesting. It's 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 definitely a bigger like map because it's it's old Ark or old Gotham and then new Gotham. But yeah. for some reason to me, it seems so much smaller. Like, it, it was just, like, I don't know. It seemed really condensed to me for some reason. It's the same exact map, just reskinned and, you know, redone. And the bridges yeah. are back and everything. But I, I don't know. It was just a really weird feeling I had where everything seemed so much smaller. Huh. I didn't have that with yeah. it. But I kind I, I, I think I was just sort of enjoying the novelty of, uh, you know, here's the steel mill when it's still, like, not work. yeah, not, not Jokerified. And I thought it was kind of fun that Joker still operated from there. Yeah. It seems I to be like, his like basic that. place to go to. 
Like that. I yeah. Like, I guess I don't know why. I don't know why that. It well, but maybe the, those are the only two times he ever went there. That's true. And, and, because I, I kind of like that. It's like it's like you know I'm going to go back to my old stomping grounds, and especially um, if you, if you if you look at, at this uh, uh, compared to Arkham City um, and what they're attempting to set up. Now later on, I'll get into some things where it's got prequelitis, but yeah. this is the thing I think is cool, where where it's like uh, maybe the idea is Joker. Uh, in in, uh, in Arkham City, having that disease, thinking he's about to to die, goes back to where he was when he first fought Batman. Ah, uh. um, they're thinking a little bit, you know, with stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, that's um, really cool, actually. <laughs> this, this, yeah, yeah, there is more clever here than I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some decent story stuff. Now, it, it ain't Paul Dini. I mean, yeah. like, I don't, I don't want to make any bones about it. It's not as well written or as, um, as, as I said, cohesive or as tight of a narrative. Um, as And way too much happens in one night. Which Arkham City had that problem. This one's got that to the max. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, they do have a pretty decent reason for why Batman's able to fight so many supervillains. You know, you've got that. But with the Joker stuff, I kind of think there's too much going on one night, um, especially thematically. <laughs> um, but I don't know. We can get into that. Um, but uh, I also really liked, uh, I think my favorite part of the whole game uh, is infiltrating the uh, police department. Yeah, going around and sneaking around there and seeing, seeing. It, it was pretty messed up, some of the things those, those SWAT guys were doing. And <laughs> just like hearing them talk and how corrupt they are. It was just... It was interesting, definitely. Well, and again, landscape-wise, I thought it was—I thought it was fun to get to go to that location and see it while when that building is still being used. Yeah, because uh, it's because it's the the old police department, um, I think. Yeah, well, the the one in the one in um, Arkham City was where in old Gotham, it's like I think it was like a museum. No, it wasn't a museum. It was what was it? A library or something like that in in Arkham Origins. It was a different building, the one that... Oh, it was a different building. Yeah, the, oh, okay. the one that was the GCPD in Old Gotham. Um, mm-hmm. uh, oh, you're right. It's not the same place because it's not close to the water. Yes, yeah. Well, it's not, it's in New Gotham, so um, I guess they had okay. moved it at some point to Old Gotham for some reason. Because it was I, when I flew over there, I was like, oh, that's a completely different building. What is this? Like, it's like a library okay. or something. Yeah, I forgot um, about the... Yeah, I, but uh, um, it seems a lot bigger like than the, the one they had, eventually have in Arkham City. Um, Arkham City seems like one big room that's like a lab, and then um, you know some corridors and offices and stuff. But like the the one in 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 New Gotham seems huge compared to. It's enormous. But uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that uh, it, it's um, yeah, it's a fun game, but it's uh, it's a lot more combat heavy. Definitely. Um, which I don't know. Did you like that? Did you not like that? I, I, mean, I don't mind it. I, I've actually I, I was horrible at combat pretty much in Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. So I actually learned to hone my combat abilities in this, and I was actually using multipliers and combinations and stuff like that. So I wasn't minding it too much. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it yeah, it did seem to do less of like uh, than than what they did in Arkham City and Arkham Asylum when it came to you know running around and actually figuring out puzzles and stuff like that. It seemed more to lean on the you know fight this group, get to that objective, fight this group, and then this group, and then get to that objective. Like it it, it definitely seemed seemed pretty redundant. They tried to break that up a little bit with the with the different things like um, reconstructing crime scenes and stuff like that, but. I don't think they were as successful as they thought they might have been going into that with the, because that was that was a big hook for for me where it was like oh you can actually like reconstruct and deconstruct and rewind through a crime scene that's really interesting but when actually applicated in the game it didn't seem as interesting as it really was it seemed kind of more monotonous because it was just you have to go scan this point scan this point scan this point scrub through and then they'll show you and like I don't know it seemed less interesting to me than what I thought it was going to be. I was going to ask you if you had that. I thought that was incredibly tedious. Yeah. Yeah. And I got what they were trying to do, but the problem is you're not affecting anything. You're kind of just along for the ride, right? Yes. Because, <clears throat> um, I mean, you, you have to do it in a certain order. Well, not exactly in a certain order. I mean, if you find something in a different order. But, like, you know, you, you, you have to find all the pieces, and then you run through it, and you find the thing. And, I mean, like, it feels like detective work, but it doesn't feel like you're doing the detective exactly. work. Exactly. It, it could have been a it could have been a cut scene. And it's, those were way too long, especially the one 
the the, uh, the murder one where uh, you think it's Black Mask, but it's actually the Joker. I took forever. Oh yeah, and that was I, thought, I couldn't find. I, there was one piece I couldn't find, and it just it took me probably twenty minutes to go through that. Yeah, it didn't take me as long, but that one was the most tedious. Like that was the one where it was like, okay, this is kind of annoying at this point, because. It looks so cool. Like when they when they did the, like came out with the demos and stuff like that, uh, where I got to see like the guy scrub through and do that. I was like, oh, that's really interesting, actually. And then when you actually play it, and also okay. So in that that one where he finds out it was the Joker, did yeah. he know anything about the Joker before that point? Uh, no. I think that's how he finds out. About but how does he? How did he find out his name was the Joker? Because at the end of that investigation, he's like the Joker. We need to find out about the Joker. Like how did he find that out? I can't remember. I don't remember either, and I and I gotta tell everybody it's been a couple weeks since I finished it, so yeah. uh, I I might be a little bit rusty. I don't remember how he how he came up. Yeah, with it's it. it's only been a week since I've beaten it, but like that was weeks ago when I got to that that part with the Joker. Part. <laughs> um, because it was just all of a sudden he was talking about the Joker. I was like, did did you know anything about the Joker before you started this investigation? Like, he's all of a sudden he's like, Alfred, pull up everything you have on the Joker. Um. I, I, I remember, I seem to recall it making sense at the time. Yeah. But I... Well, I, but I, I figured I just missed something. So I figured I just something. missed something about him talking about the joke before that, um, that I wasn't paying attention to, but, yeah. Um. Uh, one of the things, um, I, I, w- I want to go back to uh, to, to uh, the, the landscapes and stuff, but one, one of the things that uh, I've heard a lot of people complain about is that Gotham is empty. Yeah that we don't get to see you people on the streets and stuff like that. And um, I, I, I get that complaint, and I kind of share it, although I appreciate they at least try to come up with a story reason for it. Um, so, but it just so, it feels like that. It just feels like they have to come up with a story reason to explain right. that. Like, that's what it feels like. Yeah, that it's 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 not it's not really it's not really natural. Um, it's not like oh, the only way this could possibly work would be if you cleared the streets. Yeah, no, they just didn't want to have to animate people on the streets. Yeah. Um, and I, I think part of it too is it's because they want to go full blown Arkham City mechanics. Because in Arkham City, if you see people on the street, you're gonna fly down and you can beat them up. Whoever you see, ex- in, in, except for like a, a, a few token people. Whoever you see, you're going to be able to go beat them up. They're always bad guys, yeah. and you can't, you can't, you would have to come up with a new game mechanic to discern between them. If you had, e- even if you were going to be, even if you were going to going to be unlazy enough to build all those people. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, I guess the problem with it is it makes it a little less cool that it's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. You would think people would be going around doing maybe last minute shopping or something like that. <laughs> Or... Um, well, it just doesn't. It just doesn't feel as Christmassy, and I think that 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 was supposed to be kind of the big aesthetic was, uh, you know, the the, the big kind of kind of atmosphere thing. Um, oh, cool, it's Christmas Eve. We, we remember Batman Returns for that. Yeah. And that's 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 a thing people associate with Batman. Um, the the uh, the interesting juxtaposition of seeing Batman, uh, uh, you know, you know, uh, fight crime and you know, you know, all this all this dark and and gritty stuff in the middle of Christmas. And uh, they they play with that a little bit. Um, sometimes it's cool. I, I I really liked it in the soundtrack, especially. There were oh, a couple yeah. of places where they used Christmas songs uh, in the big bombastic um, orchestral soundtrack, yes. and I thought that was neat. Uh, but yeah, yeah, um, I'm not sure they went far enough with it. I, it just seemed like, because, I mean, Arkham City took place during the winter, and then, like, this took place on Christmas Eve. Yeah, it, it, outside of, like, Alfred mentioning it every once in a while and that one thug guy wearing a Christmas hat, like a Santa hat, it, it didn't <laughs> seem like, I don't know. Yeah, after a while, after the first maybe hour or so, like, once you get past point the point where he's hanging that guy off the Christmas tree and stuff like that, it just seems like you, you forget it's Christmas, like, at, at, that, at a certain point. It just seems like you're running around. Arkham City. Yeah, they they play with it a little bit with the Joker, where you know he's talking about unwrapping presents and things. Oh yeah, like they, yeah. They try to play with it, and and Christmas has been a Joker thing a lot, um, in the past. Yeah. So I, I kind of appreciate the idea of Joker doing that, um, you know, you know, doing doing this on Christmas Eve. But yeah, it's just if they could have developed a mechanic where you actually had people in Gotham at that period, it would have felt more like more like um, more like it was actually Christmas. Yeah. Um. So I. Uh, um, I don't know, game mechanics, uh, boss fights. People are praising the boss fights. What do you think? Um, they were pretty interesting. I, my favorite part of that entire game has to be the um, electrocutioner because they, he was just a gigantic wuss. Um, 
And like, because <laughs> I was taunting him, like at the point where you're about to fight him, and they give you a moment to kind of like walk around before you attack him. And I was like, I was taking that time since I was doing my playthrough. I was just like taunting him and being an idiot and stuff. And then I just like straight up laid him out in like one punch. And I was like, okay. <laughs> Like, that was hilarious to me. That's not really a boss fight, but um, yeah, poor Electrocutioner, does he regularly get, you know, like, just completely put down in the comics? I guess, honestly, he's not a character I know very much okay. about at all. It's probably the point, okay. you know, because he sounds like he should be a total badass, but... <laughs> <laughs> he has those gloves, and he's just like, come on, Batman, and, like, and then you just, you, you knock him out, and then the Joker throws him out a window. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, like, uh, I thought the, um, dead, uh, dead shot, uh, death stroke, um, fight was pretty interesting. Um, because you had to be, you had to be like quick for that. Um, it yeah, really, that was kind of tough. it really felt like he was a trained assassin who was probably the hardest guy you were going to go up against because you had to counter at the right time. If you counter too early, you'd mess up and he'd hit you and you know, you, your health would go down so quickly. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. It took me a few times to beat him. Um, I, I died. A, I died two or three times. Uh, I did too. Trying to take him down. So I thought that was pretty cool because I mean, if he is going to be a really hard assassin to beat, it would be difficult. Like that was actually challenging, um, which was uh, the complete opposite of like the last fight. I think we talked about this um, in our Arkham the, City podcast about the fire, the Firefly fight, or oh no, no, no I was the. the um, the Arkham Asylum fight, uh, the Joker, oh, who, where they're just throwing they they're they're throwing out like a bunch of different enemies, and it's just annoying. Like that was not challenging to be challenging. That was just like hard challenging. <laughs> like yeah, it wasn't the right kind of challenge. It wasn't fair. Yeah. So, but I mean, like the 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 death Deathstroke fight. I keep wanting to say like Deadpool or Deadshot. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> like I'm so used to Deadpool that when I hear Slade Wilson, I think that's like a parody on like. Deadpool, but then Deadpool is the parody on Deathstroke, so That's it's right. so confusing it, it, to me, because I know more about Wade Wilson than I do Slade Wilson. <laughs> yeah, and you notice that uh, DC lately uh, has been playing up Deathstroke really hard. Yeah. Like, yeah. not to be like the new Deadpool, because he's not funny or anything, no, he's but I mean, like, you know, you know, but, he, but uh, he's everywhere right now. I mean, like, he's huge in Arrow. And then uh, they made a big deal out of him in this, in this game, and I kind of wasn't sure it was warranted. Like, his boss fight was really cool, but then when you, when you see him again at the end in that jail cell, I was like, why are we making such a big deal out of Deathstroke? <laughs> like, are we going to do something with him later, or are they just doing that because he's in Arkham City? Yeah. So they're mm -hmm. just making a big deal out of out of all the, you know, prequel stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I thought that was funny. Um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention about Destro because I thought it was kind of it was kind of interesting um, uh, for for uh, for people that are watching Arrow. I thought it was interesting that uh, the the locale where you fight Destro just before you get there, uh, you you go across an armory of um, missiles or something built by Queen Industries. It says it says Queen Industries on it, and then you go fight Destro. Um, and I wonder if that was on purpose because Deathstroke's such a big deal in Arrow right now. Yeah. I thought that was kind of neat. Interesting little tie in there that they that they did that. Yeah, um, there there are there are a few uh, cool um, Easter eggs like that. I, I didn't find as many as in Arkham City, uh, which was just littered with them. Uh, one thing I thought was cool though was there, there were a couple of billboards for uh, Soda Cola, which is a uh, big thing in um, in a, in, a, in a couple comics in uh, in DC. Um, you see, I think. I don't know where Soder came from originally. Um, I saw it a lot in Resurrection Man, but I think it's also maybe a um, John Constantine thing. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. More tie-ins. Uh, I but just wanted to throw that out. There. Yeah, I liked that. Um, like when I first started off in the Batcave, like I was just looking around and I, I saw like um, he had pinned news articles to the thing. I think there was something that mentioned Daggett Industries and something that mentioned, like, he had some that was like, who is the Red Hood? And he was trying to figure out who the Red Hood was and, and stuff like that. So I appreciated that a whole lot. Um, yeah, I didn't notice Daggett. That's awesome. I'm pretty sure they had something with Daggett in there. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they did. But, like, I, I thought that was interesting because, like, <laughs> you know, I, I know a little bit about the Red Hood and the whole, you know, origin of, you know, the Joker and stuff like that. And, and, that wasn't something that was outright explained. I think they really kind of had that all um, just in there. It was just, it wasn't really explained. It was just in there. Like, cause they, during that one flashback sequence, you're as the Joker, just walking through in the red hood. Um, I thought that was really cool because, but it, it seemed to me like that may be something lost on somebody who doesn't really know Batman at all. Um, I don't know. 
didn't seem like they yeah no i could see that um but they they did i don't know they did a decent job i think of um of playing that to where you could tell what was going on well yeah because they're like you know go on in there like they were like forcing them to go in or whatever i think so that made sense but like they 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 didn't like outright explain that the the batman was his like was the reason why it became the way he was. I mean, they did, but it was all like kind of more like symbolic because they had like the giant bat, like weird looking, scary thing and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I don't know. I almost wish they had been somewhat more explicit about that, just because um, it seems it's like I said earlier. It seems weird that the Joker comes to this whole like epiphany all in one evening. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, yeah, he, he, he fought, he fought Batman before as the Red Hood and stuff, but I, I, I guess, I guess I couldn't figure out why, because he would have known that already. So it seemed kind of weird that, like, he gets taken out, he gets thrown in Blackgate, and then he has this whole epiphany, he's too much of a philosopher in this, for my taste, mm-hmm. like, 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 a, like, it's like the Joker comes up with this whole yin and yang, we are the same, mm-hmm. you know. The, the two sides of the coin thing on his own. I fe- that felt a little bit forced to me. So then, uh, so so they do so they do that whole thing uh, at the same time as they're setting up Harley Quinn. Is oh like, yeah, well that when she isn't it, isn't it a little too much in one? Night? I, I, I thought about that too because when, when she started talking, I was like, is that Harley Quinn? And then as it went on, her accent got like thicker, and I was like, oh, that's definitely Harley Quinn. I was like, this doesn't exactly make sense because. In, in Arkham Asylum, they have audio tapes where it seems like it's, like, the first time she's been in there talking to. Yeah, that didn't make and any so there's, sense. But there's a few of those kind of, like, anachronism sort of things um, right. in, the, in the game um, that people were pointing out to me. Like, like the accelerated grapple. Um, they, like, they specifically said in Arkham City, like, the, what you use when you double tap A and you'll, you'll launch off of things and keep going. That was a prototype in Arkham City. How is that a thing in... Arkham Origins, something that's supposed to be an origin story. I understand Warner Brothers Montreal is going to want to, since they're trying to build off of Arkham City, they're kind of keeping some of the elements from that, some of the gameplay elements. That and it would take forever to get around the city if you just were able to grapple and you weren't able to glide and stuff like that. Um, but that was kind of like a, a thing that was kind of sent back in time for some reason. Also, the, the glute grenade yeah. was the same thing as the ice thing. Uh, the ice bomb that you had in, in Arkham... Uh, city where you could throw it in the water and, and glide on it and stuff like that um, so I, I don't know why he didn't like it just it's one of those things where it's like why didn't he have that in Arkham Asylum or Arkham City if he has it here sort of thing yeah if these are narrative driven games I wish more attention was paid to that and it, it seems it, it seems kind of wrong to make those kinds of concessions for the narrative we're going to do a prequel just for the sake of gameplay yeah um, like, like it, it seems like it ought to go the other way, you know. Um, I, I think people could probably uh, forgive them. Well, it takes a little longer to get around the city because it would, you know what I mean? Like, like, like you're if you're if you're supposed to be experiencing early Batman, you should be experiencing the man. I wish I had better gadgets aspect. Of it. <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I, I really, I really think that. Like, like, let that be a progression. Um, and at the very least, be a little bit more savvy about what new things you invent that Batman wouldn't be able to use later or want to use later. Yeah. Because every new gadget he has in this is small enough that I don't understand why he doesn't have it by Arkham Asylum. Yeah. Uh, I had a really tough time with the Electro Gloves. Yeah. I was like, well, okay, it's a pair of gloves! It's not because his whole explanation in Arkham City for why he doesn't carry everything around with him is he tried to put it all on one belt and it was too heavy. You know, he tried a heavier belt. There, there's a line at the beginning of Arkham City, and and uh, and so like um, all the stuff in this, it's too small. It's like okay, well, if you've got gloves that can electrocute things, like why did you need that electro gun thing in Arkham City that you shoot to open doors with the electro yeah. thing? If you've got electric gloves, because they're just gloves, you just wear them, and then you like you turn them on when you want to electrocute. I don't understand. <laughs> just keep, just keep wearing those. Um, and the other one I had, and, and I was with you with the glue gun. I was like, why wouldn't you always carry that? <laughs> because because we know from from Arkham Asylum that you are going to constantly run into places where steam pops out of a, in a corridor, and you're gonna want to be able to block that crap. Like, why wouldn't you carry that with you? Um. But the other big one for me was 
I forgot what it was called, but that thing that you that you shoot up and it creates a line between two conveniently placed hooks. Oh yeah, yeah, that was the uh, the remote claw or something like that. I think it was the remote claw. Yeah. Well, um, when we get to Arkham Asylum, we've got the we've got the one that we can like the line launcher, uh, the line launcher that we kind of hang glide on, and it's big enough that it required the uh, that it required the bat plane to break through a window and give it to us. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're playing this, and you've got this, this like this, this like uh, tiny streamlined. <laughs> and I'm like, why wouldn't you always carry that with you? It's a tiny piece of rope. It's almost like after Arkham Origins, he goes to Alfred. He's like, Alfred, I want to make this much bulkier. <laughs> like, yeah, I want everything way larger. I mean, I, I don't, I don't mean to nitpick and complain about tiny things. It, it, it's, it, but I it just for the for the sake of narrative, I feel like they're 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 making some weird compromises. Yeah. Um, it'd be, because I don't think that uh, a prequel is the best place to innovate. That that's that's the bottom line for me. Is is it's like well they're trying really hard to keep progressing this gameplay wise and building on what's there already. But if it's a narr and, and I feel like the first two games are really really well narratively based things mm -hmm. where it's about telling a story as much as it is about having a, having a fun gameplay experience. Um, like if they wanted it to be just the straight up Arkham City mechanics. Um, minus the, 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 the double tap, uh, you know, um, uh, grapple yeah. thing. Um, like they should have, they should have just done that. And I don't think people would have begrudged them too much, uh, not really innovating much. Cause it's a prequel. Ba Batman wouldn't, Batman can't innovate. He's in the past. Yeah. That's just how I feel about it. And also I think having a larger map is enough. That's true. Well, I mean, that's the that's the thing you take on when you when you take on a prequel. Yeah, you shouldn't you shouldn't like set yourself up to to make like to completely reinnovate things. Like it should be that's that's the problem you're taking on is is people expect you to kind of keep the conveniences that were put forward in Arkham City, but at the same time, you kind of have to stand by the conviction to not like do that. Like have have. Maybe have gadgets that wouldn't like like you said. You kind of have to step out the, outside the box and try to figure out gadgets that Batman wouldn't need down the road, but would yeah, still help. Or that, yeah, that that help, but then he came up with better versions of them, yeah. or they just would have been completely useless in Arkham Asylum or Arkham City for some reason. Like I don't know what it would be, but come up with the gadget that is helpful in a big city in a way it's not in a in a in a prison. Yeah. Um, I don't know, <laughs> but um. <laughs> I didn't. I don't like how it was incredibly convenient. Right after you get those electric gloves, right after yeah. right after you get them, every single place you go has the place the things that you need to charge up. Like, that's such a that's such a video game thing where it's like, okay, yeah. you've unlocked this. Now it's everywhere. Now it's everywhere. Yeah. Now to be fair, Arkham City had that to a degree, yes. but it wasn't nearly as in your face about yeah. it. Well, no, it seemed like everywhere I went needed those electric gloves. Yep. Especially like right after I got him in that hotel, you needed them every single like to activate an elevator, activate a door. And it's silly. It's like, how did the city know that boss fight was going to happen right now? <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> because somehow it seems like it knew. Um, I also wasn't real sure about the uh, the gloves and the fights. Okay, well, you didn't did you you didn't play the Wii U version, did you? No. I okay, didn't. so Arkham, the same team that made this game, uh, was tasked to port over. Arkham City to the Wii U, and uh, they added a gimmick to it in order, I guess, sell copies. Um, yeah. and so it's called the Armored Edition, and what you have is this ability to um, double tap the sticks on the on the Wii U control pad, and it, it 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 it's like the suit has it takes the kinetic energy you have during fights, stores it up, and then you can release it all at one time. So it makes it makes you stronger, it makes you take down people faster. So they essentially just took that mechanic and moved it over to. Um, moved it over to Arkham Origins. Now, I'm not sure if, um, I don't believe, because with the electric gloves, regardless of what enemy type you're fighting, you can punch them. Like, even if they have a shield, if they have anything, you can just take them down just like they were anybody else. I don't think it was like that in, in the Armored Edition for Wii U. But, um, yeah, it was, once you got that and you, like, store it up and used it, you could take out any group of people so easily. It was ridiculous. Well yeah, what I didn't get about it is because there's a certain logic to the kinetic energy thing, but those are just, I mean, I don't know what they're powered on, but they're just electric gloves. Like anytime you walk up to a console or something that you needed to uh, to to electrify, you've you've got the charge. You can just electrify yeah. it. So it seemed 
really convenient that uh, you had to fight some guys for a while before suddenly it would give you the option to turn them on. Yeah. Like, I could understand, okay, you could turn them on at the beginning, but then eventually they run out of power and you've got to wait for for it to get repowered or, yeah. or charged up or whatever. I could get that. but why? So I'm glad you explained that to me because it seems like they took a gimmick that had a different logic behind mm-hmm. it and applied it to something that, has a total that is a different kind of gadget yeah uh, okay that's really silly right yeah. like we're halfway in the middle of a fight and now i can turn the gloves on but if i walked up to a door i can turn them on immediately well i mean i i understand like yeah there isn't a logic to it but i understand for gameplay wise it makes sense because they don't want people to be able to just turn them on right at the beginning of a fight um, yeah but it's yeah. annoying because you can turn on anything else right at the beginning right like you can oh, yeah. set bombs the whole time you can throw batarangs the whole time like it is the only thing that works that way well yeah that yeah when you go up to something to charge that you need to charge up you don't need to go punch a couple guys before you can do yeah. that why can't we have some kind of a strategy to it right like why, why why can't i decide when it's a good idea to use that make it like any other power up where where you know you can only use it for like 15 seconds yeah. And it, like I don't know, that's what they should have done with that. I think, but whatever. Um, one of the one of my biggest complaints is the bridge. Oh my god, uh, the, bridge. the bridge is annoying. Did you use fast travel a lot, or did you always travel the bridge? No, I kept traveling the bridge because I'm stupid. I, I I don't know what it was. I had a hard time figuring out how the fast travel thing worked. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know what it was because it's like <laughs> I'm not the most adept at video games. Yes, yes, first, yes, yes, So yes, I probably yes. there's probably something that I that I that I you know should have been able to figure out that I didn't. But I, it seemed like uh, I I would go to the map and there was only like one place where you could get on it. Yeah. And um, so there were places where it just wasn't convenient to 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 use it because it dropped me off in a place where I didn't want to be. Yeah. Did you were you disabling the towers or whatever like that Enigma had done? Uh, maybe I didn't do enough of that. Yeah, because, well, I mean, you couldn't, if you were in an area that you hadn't done the tower and you could fast travel from there, um, okay. and you also couldn't fast travel to there. So there, I think there was only like seven towers or something like that. I mean, I know I disabled a couple yeah. of them. Probably but you're, you're right. I probably just didn't do enough of those. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not like I, I, I guess I guess I'm 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 not saying that I felt like I was traveling the bridge too horribly much. But whenever you did, it was it annoying. Took... Like that's the, the... that's why I started fast traveling oh, everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, what was more annoying for me was the lack of grapple points. Yeah. Yeah, it was annoying. <laughs> I didn't understand that because, like, in, in Arkham City, anytime there's something above you, you can grapple to it. Yep. And in this game, there's a, there's a lot of places where there is a wire. It's right there. It will not let me grapple to it. I completely agree with you on the lack of grapple points. Because th- there's points where, like, yeah, anywhere in Arkham City, if you were, like, running on the street, you could just hit RB and you would, like, it would. It was really cool that way. But in this game, it's like, I want to run away from guys. I can't grapple. I can't grapple. Why can't I grapple? <laughs> like, uh, it was... It... And like you were saying earlier with with uh, with something else, like, like you, you want it with boss fights, you know, you want it to be challenging, but the right kind of challenging. Like, I, I, I don't think, I don't think it's... Um, I think it's a little bit just kind of grueling to to be like, okay, I've got to find the right grapple point. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't think that's well. Right. Maybe maybe this could be an explanation. Batman yeah. is so inexperienced at this point that he cannot <laughs> grapple everywhere. But only on that. It's only a problem on that bridge. Yes, yes, only on the bridge. <laughs> um, speaking of the bridge, there is a um, now I, again. I love that we can go between old Gotham and New Gotham. I think it's super cool that we've got a bridge because, of course, you know it's it's blown up in uh, in Arkham City. But I'm like I'm really used to the bridge in Gotham that's blown up. Yeah. <laughs> There's so many stories, you know, No Man's Land, Batman Begins does it. Uh, you know, you know, I'm so used to that bridge being blown up. It's fun to actually get to use it for once. But um. Tell me if you had this problem, because again, it might. This might just be my lack of video game savvy. Okay. Um, I got the the place that I got hung up the most, and I do feel like that of the three of them, this is the least intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know if you agree with that, but uh, there, I got I got hung up in a couple places. Yeah. And the big one was go find Gordon at the central pillar. Which which point was that? Oh wait 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 yeah I I okay. I did. Did you have the same thing I did? I did? Get, what, is this the part before the Firefly stuff? Yes. Okay, I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to be doing. I think. It took me an hour. It I could. Yeah. Hour, but it took me. It took me like maybe five minutes or so to figure it out. I was just like, where the? Okay, what am I doing? Like, <laughs> he was okay. You have to go through this door. Oh, I didn't know that. Like, 
Uh, yeah, that, that, I thought that was super confusing uh, for, for a couple of reasons. This is why it took me an hour. Uh, I, I get to what is clearly the central pillar. Like, you turn one way, and there's the end of the bridge. And then you turn the other way, and there's the other end of the bridge. I'm in the middle! <laughs> and, I, and I know I'm at the central pillar. And it's not until that moment where Batman says, I've got to get to the central pillar. <laughs> and I'm like... Oh, okay, I thought I was at the central pillar, because usually, tell me if I'm crazy, Dan, mm -hmm. am I not wrong in saying that usually in a video game, when your character starts starts uh, 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 taunting you, saying, I'm, I'm supposed to be at this other place, it means you're nowhere near there? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, okay, I didn't think I was nuts, so I'm where I'm supposed to be. When I was at the far end, or the other far end, Batman was not saying this to me. When I'm at the central pillar, he goes, I've got to hurry up and get to the central pillar. He doesn't just say it one time. As I'm descending, he continues to say it. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not where I'm supposed to be. So two or three times I did that, where I would run off somewhere else because I was like, I guess this is, I don't know what central pillar means, but apparently this is not it. Then what threw me off, finally I decided to ignore that because I was like, this has got to be the, what else is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is not intuitive whatsoever to say, at the base of the central pillar, and then I'm supposed to find a door to go inside. Nobody is going to be on a bridge expecting to go inside of it. <laughs> right? Well, the only reason the only reason I figured it out faster than you did uh, was because there was hostiles down there. There were SWAT guys. Smart. Well, see, here's the thing. I took them out, and then I looked around and went, I don't see Gordon anywhere, and I left. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know either. I was just looking around. I'm like, okay, where am I supposed uh, to go right now? Oh, wait, this door, because I was in detective mode, so, like, I, the door is lit up orange, and so I was like, oh, okay, there it is, door, okay, whatever. See, okay, I guess I forgot to go in detective mode or something, I don't know, but I didn't notice the door, and yeah, anyway, that was infuriating. I had the, I mean, I had the exact same thing, uh, where it took... Base of the central pillar. <laughs> how, how would I expect, uh, well, I expected to see Gordon just down there, and that's the thing, is when I saw that SWAT team, I went, yeah, I found it, and I'm like, oh, just guys to beat up? Crap. Did I accidentally beat up Gordon? Is he down there amongst the bodies? <laughs> Yeah, did I kill Harvey Bullock? <laughs> oh, when Bullock popped up, what I happened? freaked out. Well, when he, when he had the same voice he did in the animated series, I died. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I wish he'd gotten some something else to do because he only gets like four or five lines. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's it's that guy, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, he, the guy also voiced uh, Joe and Mafia too, and so that's all I was hearing because they'd been a lot of oh, scene Bullock. Um, but when he popped up, he was like, hey, is it the, that the bad or something like that? And I was like, oh, my God, is that Bullock? Like, I was freaking out because <laughs> even knowing it wasn't Paul Dini, they still had that animated series connection. Um, I don't know. Your Bullock sounds a little bit like Chief O'Hara. Chief O'Hara. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, man. What was, the, was that? Was that the Irish cop? Yes. From uh, the, the Adam. From, from, from oh, I don't know Gash. about their, their commissioner. <laughs> Saints Magora. Yeah. <laughs> the the, uh, the only uh, the, and then and then the other place I got kind of hung up was actually right after that, which which made it all the more frustrating. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it sucks when everything it goes wrong at once. Yeah, all at once, yeah. Um, so I go, I finally go inside there and I talk to Gordon and I'm like, thank God I found Gordon. The whole city should have blown up by now, but I found Gordon. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, and so and so I figure out that you're you're supposed to actually stay inside and go do all that stuff. Um, there there are a couple places like this in this game where I, I would come upon what what I thought was a dead end, where you actually could jump onto like uh some kind of uh piece of metal in front of you but mm -hmm. i couldn't tell mm -hmm. that it was something you could interact with yeah yeah um i don't know if you had that but and there's a couple of those in arkham asylum too but Arkham like i well. guess there was there's um specifically when you first enter the steel mill uh through the, oh, the pipe yeah you're that's, right that's how i knew since i've played arkham city about five times at this point um, I, I knew, I knew to recognize that. That's how I got by it kind of easier. Than See, I just easier. played Arkham City again, but I guess that for me, for whatever reason, it didn't look as like, like anything that you could, you know, actually interact yeah. with. So, um, yeah, so I actually, I actually left there and ran around for a while and came back and was like, I guess there's something I'm supposed to do here. But anyway, so that was, I, so I, I, I hated, I hated that I couldn't figure that out. Um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining because obviously you figured it out easily, but like, I don't know. That was probably just me being. Well, there were some. Okay, so the, comparative to Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, this was the glitchiest game of yeah. the three by yeah. far. Like they've had to release patches to fix stuff, and and just like 
there's been problems on the Xbox version, on the PC version, on all of the versions. There have been mass problems. I ran, it, and it was getting to the point where the glitches were really ruining it for me. Like, I was getting to the point where I was, like, maybe just before halfway through the game, and the story wasn't really going that hard, and, like, and the game was just starting to glitch out on me at certain points. Like, there's a glitch where, where you go to disable this tower, and you fight a bunch of guys, and then you get on, use the remote claw thing, you go through this window and you have to use your um, cryptographic sequencer to do this thing. And once you do it, the Joker closes the the area you came in through with bars. And he's like, ah, see, let's see you get out of this one. And th there's a grate. So you get the grate, you grab the grate, and you rip off the cover. And then you jump up into the grate and you're supposed to go through and disable the tower that way. Well, the glitch was you can't climb into the grate. You can only hang from it. What? And so I'm sitting here, like, hanging from the grate. I'm like, enter the grate, Batman. Just go in. Like, that's all you have to do. He's just hanging there. And I jump down. I'm, like, looking around. I'm like, okay, I'm blocked in now. Can't do anything. I can't, like, I can't do anything but go to that grate. And it won't let me go in it. And so, like, when I'm sitting there recording my playthrough, I'm like, okay, I'll be right back. I hit pause. And I, like, pulled up my iPad and looked it up. And there was, like, I guess this glitch where you couldn't go through it. The only way around it was this crazy weird workaround where somebody figured out you could like go on this pipe and walk up against it and glitch out and it'll launch you up high enough to get into where you need to go. But I'm not that skilled. And it was just like, what? That is the stupidest glitch. And eventually they patched it and they fixed it. So I went back and got it. But that was annoying. And also, did you play the Mad Hatter part? No, I, I, I didn't get to that part. Okay, so the Mad Hatter part is um, essentially the Scarecrow sequences from, um, from Arkham Asylum but nowhere near as good. Um, it, it was really supposed to be this trippy thing. He's controlling your mind, and you have to try to break it. So you're going through this weird Mad Hatter, you know, La La Alice in Wonderland thing, which was pretty cool, but the main obstacles that kind of you kind of kept having to avoid and stuff like that was shock plates that turn on and off for a certain amount of time, and I didn't think that was that interesting. But then I get to this point where you have to get on this um, tea saucer, um, and go up, you, you use your, you know, like for the ghoul gun and the ice uh, grenade, you have to um, stand on it and then use your grapple to pull yourself across. Yeah. So I'm standing on this tea saucer and using my grapple to try to pull myself across, and the tea saucer doesn't move at all. <laughs> it, it, it's like it's moving a little bit to where I know it should be pulling me across the water. Oh, but it man. wasn't doing anything. And it was glitched out in that spot, and I had, kept having to restart, and eventually, luckily, I got through it. But I eventually dislodged it enough off of the land in order for it to work. But, like, that was really ruining it for me. Um, that and I, I – yeah, it was – so I was getting to the point where I was getting really down. But then I got to the Joker stuff and I was a lot happier. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, the glitches were annoying. Yeah, um, and I, I didn't have this much, but there were a couple places I had, I had some camera issues. Yeah. Um, the, the, uh, the big Bane fight, which was, which was hard and mostly a good kind of hard, mm -hmm. um, where, where, uh, where he's chasing you through corridors. Um, was it the last, last Bane fight? Yeah. Which, which took me a while to beat. Um, I got beat a couple of times. Oh, okay. Trying to do that. But, um, cause I'm no good at video games, but anyway, <laughs> um, the, the, uh, but the thing was, I, I thought the, the, the camera there was, was weird. Cause there were a couple places where, um, like, like, uh, like I should have been able to just turn around and look at him, but it wouldn't let me do that. So he kept grabbing me from behind cause I couldn't see him. And I was like, well, that's were, not Were fair. you using the grates a lot? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, I pretty much just like stood in there until he went away and then came yeah, I, I, was, my... I wasn't really chasing him too much. I pretty much just used the grates because he was pretty well, dumb. Well, I, I did that. I, I did that some, but then I mean a lot. But then there were places where like he would figure out you were there. It was sort of like that Mr. Freeze fight in Arkham City. It was City a lot like the Mr. Freeze fight. Once you did something, he he would know yeah. you could do it. It was harder to use it, or or sometimes impossible to use it again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't experience all the glitches you did, which is weird. Like I like. Um, I don't know. I don't know how. If they had to release a patch, I don't know how I didn't have that. That one that you meant that you that you were talking about with the grade. Yeah, that was that was, that was called uh, Burnley Tower, and uh, yeah, it was. I don't think everybody had it, but okay. But uh, mine didn't have that. Yeah. Did you play on the PC or the Xbox? No, I played it on the 360. Yeah. Okay, I was playing on the PC. It might have just been a PC glitch then, um, but oh, it was so annoying. And that like random <laughs> things were you know I I kind of liked that there was a lot more interrogation going on in this game. Well, not. Yeah, I like. I mean, that, that was pretty cool, but like. You would fight a group, and then 
the very last guy you were supposed to interrogate, but he would still keep trying to fight for a little bit before it connected to him that, oh, I should give up. So like, <laughs> I knew I had to interrogate the guy and I didn't want to take him down or anything, which was actually something in, the, in Arkham City. Um, if there was a Riddler guy that you needed to do, you could, you could take him down without interrogating him and it wouldn't give you the stuff. It would just make another Riddler guy somewhere else. In this right. game, they don't do that. They actually they don't allow you to take him down. But the thing is, once you've taken everybody else out, he's supposed to start cowering. But usually he'll throw in a couple punches extra before he does that for some reason. And I was just like, why don't they just immediately do that? So it seems like a, a thing they didn't quite refine, but I don't know. A lot of games. Yeah, there's, you're right. There, there's a little bit of sloppy here and there. Yeah. Um, but, I, I mean, I guess, we're, I guess we're being kind of hard on it. I still enjoyed it. Um, there is a lot to like. About. I thought the Enigma thing was cool. Yeah, like pre Riddler um, thing. I haven't. I still haven't finished that yet. But. It's not. Yeah, I haven't even begun to. It's not as much fun as in Arkham City, just because the. Uh, it's not question marks. Yeah, it's just like out of <laughs> so, hacks. Like this is that. Yeah, and also, and also, when you see you know in Arkham City, you can always uh, you know you know you know see where the uh, where the Riddler trophies are going to be because you can see the question marks. They're a little harder to to, to find in this because they're not lit up like that. Yeah. Um, and it's just not—I don't know—it's just not as exciting because it's not—it's not—it's not question well, marks. I just like the Riddler. He's your favorite, correct? Yeah, he's yeah, he's one of my favorite characters. So, so. Um, but I was really happy that he was back, and I was really happy that it was the same voice. Oh yeah, um, was it was it still um, Wally Winger? He was still Wally Winger. Yeah, I, at least I think it, I didn't look it up, but it sounded like Wally Winger. Um, uh, so I so I think I think it, it is was. still Wally Winger. Okay, yeah, I, I was almost positive it was, but yeah, um, which made me happy because I, I like Wally Winger a yeah. lot. Which which actually kind of brings us to a, a different kind of topic is the voice actors. Yeah, go ahead. Voice, voice actors. Yeah. Um, what? How do you think uh, everyone pulled it off? Uh, I think Batman was fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely do too. And the, and the biggest reason I think he worked so well is because I wasn't thinking about him. Yeah. Um, that, that's, that's the key. You know, if you're not constantly going, well, he doesn't sound enough like Kevin Conroy. Now he was, I mean, he sounded like Batman to me. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was really good. And, uh, that was another one of those things where people, uh, when they first heard about this game were complaining because the voices weren't the same. And I mean, yeah, again, they, they got Wally Wingard again. Obviously they were going to use the voices when they thought they could get away with the younger versions, but they, they, they wanted people to sound younger and Kevin Conroy can't pull off a 28, 32 year old Batman anymore. Yeah. Um, so that's fair. I, I got that. Um, the, the Joker I liked a lot. Um, I don't think he is as much of a match for, um, um, for the original as, as, uh, as, as people are saying he is. I thought he sounded like a cross, mm-hmm. but and I liked it. I thought it was good, but I actually thought there was a little bit of ledger in what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're, yeah, I think, I think it was definitely kind of a cross between that. Um, because there, there were elements of. Definitely of of Mark Hamill in there. Mark Hamill and and Le- yeah, I mean he was doing a lot of Hamill, but you know I, I saw I saw him uh, on on online. I watched it. I watched a thing where he was at a uh, convention and he was doing the killing a, joke a, speech. A yeah, and he sounded a lot more like Mark Hamill in that speech. He did, and, and, and I listened to that before I played the game. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that'll be good. But then, yeah, it was a bit different in the game. Um, I mean, I liked it. It was fine, but um, I I felt like he kind he kind of maybe maybe the more he did it, the more he kind of got into his own groove. Yeah. you know. Yeah, it was definitely good. Yeah, his laugh seemed to be kind of more Mark Hamill, but uh, in general, he sounded like a raspier. Like it, it was a bit raspier to me for some reason. I mean, Mark Hamill is pretty raspy towards the end, like with Arkham City, but. Yeah, and I think maybe he went slightly raspier than animated series so that he could try to match it more with with uh, with the Arkham City Joker because um, I think some of that raspiness in Mark Hamill's performance was because he's older, yeah, because he's doing an older Joker, and I think and I think some of it is because he was doing a different Joker, yeah, yeah, definitely and a darker Joker, thought, definitely a darker Joker, yeah, much darker. I think Mark Hamill took one look at that dialogue and said, well, "I can't voice this the same way I did it in in, uh, in animated series because yeah. that was more of a kid friendly thing." Definitely. Um, but yeah, I thought I thought they were both excellent. I thought uh, Roger Craig Smith was was really good as Batman. Um, there yeah. were points where he was yelling that he kind of dropped the voice a little bit. It seemed like it was more so his more regular voice, I think. But um, but it was absolutely fine. I loved the part with um, uh, Batman and Alfred when when you know Alfred was really trying to stop him from going out, and it was just I, I really liked that scene. What, what, what were your thoughts on it? 
Oh yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Um, that, that was that was cool. I, I thought that uh, the drama at the beginning of the game was a lot uh, was a lot more effective than the drama at the end of the game, mm. because I felt like uh, as the story progressed, it got like I said, I thought it started to pick up a little bit of, pre- of prequelitis. Uh, the two big things that really bugged me were the whole uh, um, Bane amnesia thing. Yeah, that was really convenient. And it's one of those things where I just, again, I feel like it's sloppy. I'm like, okay, if you have to contrive a way for Bane so that your later games, he doesn't know that Batman is Bruce Wayne, here's an idea. How about he never knew that in the first place? <laughs> well, yeah. Why, does was... need, why, why, why do we need that? Yeah, it definitely it was, they were definitely contriving the drama there because, you know. It's a little, it, it's not this bad. It's a little X Men Origins, right? It, it's a, it's a, it, it's a little uh, animanium bullet in the, in the, in the. Brain oh yeah, man. definitely. It, well, it kind of reminded me a little bit of Smallville, which is just like the con- in, you know, the convenient uh, unconsciousness sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. Well, and, it, and it's even worse than that because being a prequel, it's like okay, we already know that the, this guy isn't gonna know this later. Yeah. So I'm yeah. just like, well, from the very beginning, we're gonna know that you're gonna have to come up with some kind of convenience. So we're gonna hope it's cleverer than that. Yeah. We're going to hope that it's not just I took this drug and I got really beefy and I conveniently forgot this, but I don't know, nothing else. <laughs> I, well, I mean, maybe he forgot other things. I don't know, but I, nothing of consequence. Okay, well, um, well on that... So I, I don't know. That was weird. On that same point where, where it's something where you know something in the future so that you know it can't be, I really liked the Alfred dying thing. Ooh, I didn't. You didn't? No, I did not. Because like well, when he died, I was so confused. I'm like, but he's alive later, and then he used the gloves. Like I was like, okay, that makes sense. You did what? What did you like about it? Uh, th- I mean, it, again, easy drama. This is a prequel thing. We know Alfred's not going to die. Yeah, but what I actually was gonna... like, I was like, legitimately confused because I was like, how is he like dead? Like I, I actually was like, I was buying into it a little bit. Oh, I yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah. Um, and I kind of called the defib thing even. I yeah. Well, it's because I, I didn't see that. Like I didn't see that coming, and I was like, oh okay, that. Sounds- oh, okay. well, fair enough. I figured that's where they were going to go with it. It just it, it's too typical of, of 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 prequels. Um, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I. <laughs> Maybe I could have been made somehow to like that more just because of the story that's being told where, you know, it's it's like like it's really, you know, it would be really unfortunate for Batman to have to deal with, oh, no, Alfred might die and that kind of thing. I'm not sure it played into it enough. And maybe it maybe it did. You know, like you said, you had that good drama with them at the beginning. Um, and so the, the, the whole thing is about how Batman relies on Alfred and how important he is and that kind of thing. But I think I think what took the wind out of it for me was then right after that, Batman's... Uh, going off on a mission and talking to Alfred, and it's like, um, it's like, wow, you're sure recovering quickly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I thought, I thought it was, I thought it was too easy. I thought it was too gimmicky. Um, that was, that was just, I don't know. It, it was a taste thing for me. Yeah. No, well, I mean, I, I just liked how it played out. I definitely like, in the moment, they had kind of, they had me fooled a little bit. It was like one of those things, um, where it was just like I wasn't really thinking too hard about it. I I was saying out loud, I was like, he can't be dead. He's in the other games. Like, but like I was actually it was like, oh, okay, they're bringing him back, and I, I thought that was fine. But uh. well, I guess it was supposed to be a resourceful kind of thing because it's like, okay, I've got these electro gloves, I can use them like defibs. But you're in the Bat Cave. I bet he's got those somewhere. <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. <laughs> you know, so there wasn't anything especially clever about it on Batman's uh, on Batman's end, and yeah. I don't yeah, know. you would I, think if he has he has his training thing in there, you'd think they would have some sort of emergency like. Yeah, well, you, you know that Alfred is constantly fixing wounds that's and true. stuff. Yeah. They, they got a whole freaking hospital down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, no, okay, I like that a lot less than now. Yeah, it, it didn't it, it didn't really play very well for okay. me. Uh, but what whatever. You ruined that <laughs> moment for me, Captain Logan. Thank you. Oh, oh, so, sorry, sorry, Dan. <sighs> Um, well, let, let me let me see if I can make it better for you. Um, when when I a lot of people are complaining that it's that the title is stupid because it's not enough of an origin for Arkham. It, it has nothing. Now that I now that I've played it, I disagree. Uh huh. I think it works. Okay, how? Only if you listen to the to the closing. No, credits. I know that's what annoys me about it. Is the only thing that has to do with Arkham is the fact that Quincy Sharp is on the radio at the end in the credits. Uh, but it, but that's not the only thing. It, it's you have to have that to understand how it I figures in. But um, I think it's pretty loose. I still think it's the, pretty loose. But it being a Joker plot, um, this is the thing that makes them bring Ar- bring Arkham back. 
But why didn't? Okay, I would have I would have completely accepted it if it hadn't just been a thing in the credits. I would have liked it to be them wheeling the Joker into Arkham at the end, as opposed to... Yeah, fair enough. Like, that didn't make sense to me. If you're going to do that in the credits, just have him wheeling into the... And have the radio playing during that moment, like... Yeah. No, you... No, you yeah, you make a great point. Um, I still I still think that it's it's better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. It, it connects up in a way I didn't expect it to, right? So, yeah, that's, that's good. Because, I mean, like, you know, a lot of people have been making fun of it and saying it's, it's uh, you know, Blackgate Origins. Yeah, well, it, it really, like, it doesn't make sense to me that it's called Arkham Origins, outside of just trying to maintain the Arkhamverse, you know, name going through. But, um... Yeah. Um, no, you're right, but it, I don't know, it connected up more than I thought it was going to, so that was... Connected so that up was, less than I thought it was going to. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, I, I didn't right. expect it just to be a throwaway thing at the end of the credits. And also... Uh, I didn't expect it to be there at all, because uh, all of the interviews and stuff I saw before the game came out was like, well, th this is going to have nothing to do with Arkham, and it's good. See, I expected a more intimate game, honestly. Yeah. I, I, like, like, like uh, the... Everything uh, well before the game came out was making a really big deal out of the assassins, mm -hmm. and how it was you know you know the whole point of the game was it's Batman gets chased by eight assassins and has to beat them and I was like well that sounds like a video game doesn't it, <laughs> um, and then and I really appreciated by the way that it, that wasn't that wasn't formulaic I really thought it was going to be you beat this one and then you beat this mm -hmm. one and it really didn't feel that way which I which I appreciated a lot um, and I didn't expect the penguin and stuff like that either so you know you know that that's that that was nice uh, but. Um, since I thought it was just going to be okay, uh, somebody hires you, you know you know Black Mask uh, hires these eight uh, assassins to take out Batman. Uh, I didn't expect it to have anything to do with God, with, with Arkham, and I think it's interesting that except for the Joker, it's not about psychopaths. Yeah, like it's about mercenaries, and then Joker pops up, so at least we don't have m multiple psychopaths in the same game. Mm -hmm. For the most part. For the most part. Like they, they don't really use a lot of the a lot of the psychopaths. Like like even even the penguin you could you could argue is not of the same caliber as the as as, uh, as the scarecrow and guys like that. Yeah. Um, you got Mad Hatter, but he's off he's off doing his own thing. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't I still don't like how they integrated the Mad Hatter in there. I wish it would have been a lot better because Mad Hatter is like one of my favorite characters. Like my favorite episode from the animated series is uh, is. Um, Oh, I think you and I have talked about this before. The, the, it's the episode where Bruce isn't Batman. Yeah, it's my yeah, it's my favorite. That, I mean too. that that and the Clock King, like those are like my two favorite episodes. Yep, I love the Clock King. Also. I know, yeah, we've talked about this before, but like <laughs> the, the Mad Hatter thing, like that is the reason why I like the Mad Hatter so much. That episode was so great, and I really love that episode. And you know, I like the other stuff that they did in the animated series with him. So I was so disappointed when when his his stuff, his side story, ended up being so. Mm. Uh, Perchance to Dream is the name of that. Yes, I don't know why I yes. I people were talking about it in the comments because I was talking about it in that in that part that went up on my channel. That like that I was talking about how that's my favorite episode, and then it was just like this didn't do justice to him at all. But I think they like they should do something more with him if they ever bring him back for another one. Because both times they've used him in the game, it was kind of I liked his part in Arkham City. It was pretty cool, but. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, what was I going to say? I was going to talk about um, uh, uh, what. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, Black Mask. I, I really felt like we didn't get nearly enough Black Mask for the amount he was in the advertising for this. Um, well, he's really not even in it. Not really. I mean, for most of the stuff he's in it, he's, it's not him. It's the Joker. Yeah, it's usually the Joker. And we get him, yeah. it's it's the part where he's just talking to, um, uh, what's her name? The assassin lady. Sheba or something like that. Sheba, yeah. Sheba. Yeah, she was... Mm. <laughs> that that fight i was just getting like she was she was kicking my butt but um yeah I, I i felt like there was gonna be more black mask maybe trying to get vengeance on the joker after that but nothing like yeah he was he was a red herring yeah. and i i'm sure it, it's one of those things because we're getting a lot of red herring villains these days yeah uh you know you know you look at iron man 3 and things like that oh, i I, yeah. I think i think that um what the game what the game designers were probably thinking was, um, let's sell this on Black Mask and then make all make everybody go, why are you selling this on Black Mask? He's not a character anybody cares about. And then blow them away when it turns out to be the Joker. Yeah. First of all, I don't think anybody... Maybe I'm wrong, and if you're listening to this in the comments, you were, let me know. I doubt anybody was super surprised by the Joker. I wasn't surprised at all. 
uh, because he has been the thing that these games have been have been built on, and also we knew he was going to be in the game. Um, I think if they had somehow managed to keep it under wraps that they had recast him and that and that he was in the game, mm-hmm. maybe it would have played better. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. know if they could have even gotten away with that. But why would you sell it so hard on Black Mask if you're also going to sell it on the Joker? It doesn't make a lot of sense. It's absolutely true. Like I was excited to have a bit of a change because I knew the Joker was going to be in it. But I think that was just more of a marketing thing that they really threw him in all those advertisements and everything. They didn't need to do that. And they probably shouldn't have done that um, because it would have made the surprise a bit better for me because I was like, when it happened, I I didn't really have a reaction of, whoa, it's the Joker. I was just like, oh, okay, that's... oh, oh I, It was more so, oh, it's not the Black Mask. <laughs> like, but Well, for me, it was like, oh, so this is going to be another really convoluted Joker scheme, isn't it? Yeah. That, like that's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, so he has, so he he is doing the playing chess, thinking you know, eighteen moves ahead thing, and we're I bet I bet we see him do a whole bunch of things that we won't buy. He was able to accomplish in one night, <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, with the black mask thing, um, it's the villain team ups in this are really interesting. Uh, and I guess black mask doesn't count as a team up because he just pretended to be him, yeah. but. Uh, you look at Under the Red Hood, and you've got that uh, you've got that really interesting uh, Black Mask Joker team up, yeah. and I think that uh, and and that, and that movie got really popular, and I think that fans. I mean, I'm not talking to just regular game players that don't know much about Batman. I think I think Batman fans were probably disappointed we didn't get much actual Black Mask because um, that movie did. Black Mask and the Joker together in a movie really well. That's and there's precedence for that. That's absolutely why I have as much of a problem with Black Mask not being in it because I know very little about the Black Mask and pretty much all I know about the Black Mask is from Under the Red Hood and I really liked Black Mask in that. Um, and I was I was so disappointed that he wasn't like hardly featured in this game. Read No Man's Land. He is fascinating there. Okay. Well, I like I, I was telling you before we started the, the the podcast. I have I have No Man's Land. I have you know Nightfall. I have to read them, whenever I have the chance. But yeah. The other thing I thought was really interesting was teaming up Joker and Bane. Oh yeah, that seemed to be pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's a that's a weird idea, and I think it's because you know I. I in my rewinds, uh, I, I guess I guess just the Arkham City one, um, I, I talked briefly about how the Nolan films have affected this franchise, um, as particularly in the soundtrack, mm-hmm. um, the, like like uh, like really Nolan derived. Oh yeah. Uh, the 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 music in these. Or Zimmer. And, Zimmer. Uh, yeah, Zimmer. Yeah, and um, you look at um. You, you, you look at uh, the last two Nolan films, and, uh, and uh, you know, Dark Knight was sold on the Joker, and Dark Knight Rises was sold on Bane. Uh, you think that's a coincidence? You think they you think they teamed up those two characters, and it wasn't because the, mo- the the two most recent and really popular Batman movies had those two, <laughs> two villains in them? Because I think that's what they were doing. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was clearly a different Bane, though. No, no, it's a different band, yeah. but I think that's why they made the, that, that choice. Yeah. Because uh, they had, you know, you know, the uh, the Arkhamverse did ban um, in a major way in Arkham Asylum before we ever knew we were going to get him in a movie. Mm-hmm. And I think once he was in a movie and he got really popular, they said, "Well, we better make this game all about Bane." Yeah. And um, but you're right; he's at least kind of a different Bane. Yeah, he, de- he definitely is a different kind of Bane. Um, and I'm glad we got to see him before he was, you know, like roided up Bane. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, because yeah, I really like that. Well, he wasn't in Arkham Asylum? He was Tiny Bane too. So we've seen all three iterations: Tiny Bane, Jacked oh, Up Bane, no. and Super Jacked Up Bane. He was super jacked up in part of our in, in part of Asylum. Oh yeah, yeah, he, he was super jacked up. I'm just saying we've seen all iterations because he started off That's Lanky cool. Bane in in Arkham Asylum. So <laughs> Lanky Bane. Lanky Bane. Yeah. We, we we have we have now come up with like four different names <laughs> for Bane in the time in in the span. Of super seconds. Bane, Super Roided Bane, <laughs> <laughs> Super Roided Bane, Tiny Bane. But, uh, I like uh, I like I like Bane trying to kill the Joker. Um, and then I, I, I liked that whole, like how that worked out and, you know, Batman saved him and stuff like that. Well, that's why I was a little disappointed with, uh, with the whole amnesia thing, because I liked everything that was, that was done with Bane up to that mm-hmm, point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, I don't know. That's the only, that's the only reason I complained about it. Um, but you know, the, a lot of the dialogue in this game is really good. Yeah. And, um, I mean, like I said, I don't think that the, that, that the story is as tight, um, as Arkham City, uh, by, by any stretch of the imagination, although... <laughs> 
some of this some of the how does Batman do all this in one night makes right like I don't buy the Joker coming to a lot of the conclusions he does about Batman and Joker's relationship that's my big complaint. yeah and pretty pretty much through one interaction could we could we maybe I don't know stretch that over time like 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 that's that's a, that's how it's always been done before and how it makes the most sense right yeah. is that that is that is a uh, that is a relationship that develops over time. Uh, that, that's the only that's the only complaint I had about that. Um, at the same time, you at least don't have that thing you had in Arkham City, where it's like you have ten hours. Yeah. To stop this protocol, but you're going to do all of this side stuff on top of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was that was my big thing with Arkham City. With this, um, at least you theoretically have time to do everything you're doing, and there's not a ticking time bomb all the time. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's there's Stop there's one point where there's a ticking time bomb, but you know that's just that's that's true. Bridge stuff. Like, it's actual. Yeah. Well, time. yeah. Literally on the. In fact, thing. there's like four of them on a bridge. <laughs> that's hard to grapple. Well, with and us, then, but... then you also have the anarchy side mission when there's also ticking oh, time yes. bombs. That's true. So there's lots of little ticking time. <laughs> but at least not. You know, you got four and a half minutes. You better also go do this other side. Yeah. Mission. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not like that. <laughs> um, I think there, you have to make a gigantic leap in logic uh, for there to be two major breakouts and riots at Blackgate in one night. <laughs> yeah. um, you think they would have locked that down at some point? You know what? Yeah, especially after you killed the commissioner. Yeah, I mean, like, the fact that Joker got out of there it proves that he's truly a mastermind because after a massive breakout where, you know, the head of the police force is murdered at Blackgate, you think they would have it locked down a bit better than, you know, they bring in one extra guy and he takes out the entire place and completely takes control. Yeah, it, well, once he breaks out, that, that's it breaks out. That's the moment where uh, where Quincy Sharp is sitting back, going, you know, I think at some point we need to have Blackgate City. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of Jack Bauer's wife and daughter getting kidnapped twice in one day in the first season of. <laughs> I never actually watched that show, but the fact that that actually happened is hilarious. Because sometimes they would sort of lose sight of the fact that they were making a whole day and not a season. Yeah. It's like, who gets kidnapped <laughs> twice in the span of 24 hours? Well, you know. So, uh, yeah, it, it was it was kind of like that. Um, You know, once again, let me reiterate. I know I'm sounding really down on this game. I guess I feel like the interesting things to talk about are the problems, because what's working is all the stuff that was working in Arkham City. Um, they, they use the they use the same the same mechanics. The engine is the same. The the everything works the way it did before. So the nice thing is, if you just played Arkham City, you can pick this up and you don't have to relearn anything. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. Oh, definitely. And okay. it's it's nice to play this and then go to Arkham Origins and go, oh, cool, I'm just playing more of that. So I think one of the things that it has it really has going forward is challenge maps. Oh yeah, I've and this is the first game I've actually played a lot of the challenge maps um, because I, I didn't like. I mean, the experience carries over to the main game, and it, yeah. it's just it's a fun thing. They, I think this is the first time they've changed or chained together um, challenges where it's like you'll do two of the the combat ones and then one takedown one where you have to. Yeah, I think that's really strong. Yeah, that's pretty. It's, it's been pretty fun going through and playing that. That's neat. It's funny because you know I always talk about how I'm not really a big a big modern gamer and um, I'm I'm more I'm more in it for the uh, story. But I have to admit that um, as much as I don't want it, the uh, the actual narrative to be too horribly combat heavy, just because I'm I'm I'm, I'm having fun. You know, playing the game and getting the story. The story, yeah. yeah. So, so it interrupts it. Um, I do enjoy the fighting in these, and um, I got into the challenge maps uh, a couple years ago when uh, Arkham City came out, and I went to a launch at a GameStop, and they did a they did a competition uh, for the challenge maps, and I had just played a bunch of Arkham Asylum to write my rewind on that, so I had been doing a lot of the of a lot of the fights, and so I was playing I was playing up against people that hadn't played it in a long time and didn't remember how the combos work. And I was like, oh, holy crap, I actually know what I'm doing. This is great. So um, so I got I got second place in that contest, and after, ever since then, I've liked the challenge maps more. Yeah. Uh, so, I, so, I, so, I keep, so I keep playing those and, uh, and playing with the, uh, you know, with all the combos and stuff. Because uh, I got to admit, the, the, the fight mechanics in, that, in, in those games, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot you can do. Like, there's a lot of extra stuff. You can, it's not just button mashing. Yeah, yeah. Like, if, if you know what you're doing, you can you can get gigantic combo strings and really kind of use all of your different gadgets in the combat. Like, it's, it was really, like, it was a really revolutionary, like, from from Arkham Asylum, for the, for, for the most part, was, like, a revolutionary combat system. And then they even added way, way more to it in Arkham City, so... 
it's 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 really fun. But uh, did you think the combat takedowns were a bit more brutal this time around? Like, uh, there's a like when you do like YB and yeah. do a takedown. Like, there's parts where he's like snapping legs and stuff like that, like breaking <laughs> people's legs. The first time I did it, I was like, did I just snap that guy's neck? Like, because <laughs> he he just like takes him down and goes, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, like that was brutal. Well, and then they never had the knockout smash before. Uh, did they? I don't. Well, uh, maybe they in, in Arkham. In Arkham, oh, I don't know about the the regular version, but I because I had been playing the Wii U version for the last like several months, but uh, definitely in the Wii U version they have it. So that the, either is something they carried over in the Wii so, U version, or it was already in the game. Um, you know, I wonder if part of the point of the Ar- of the armored edition uh, wasn't for these people to um, get a good handle on the combat system, so they could make their own game. Yeah, it was definitely. I think it was definitely something that. Uh, kind of to cut their teeth on um, because yeah. I don't know if it was planned for them to take it over but that's one of the reasons why they got it was because they were the ones who, who went through and ported ported the Arkham City to, uh, to the Wii U. I think they did a really good job, especially for the first time out. I think if they made another one it would probably be a lot more polished. Yeah, I, yeah I, that, that was something I was really like that my gigantic negative on this when it comes to everything it was the glitches that I kept running into because it was just annoying me but and and that was something that made it kind of a down experience for me but I really wish this was a bit more refined because I it really seems like I was I I was the only one of the people I've talked to who really ran into glitches I mean my friend Seamus he he had a lot of freezes happening like where it would just freeze and he'd have to restart it you know, I had a, I had two or three of those. Okay, right well then, then that's that's all he was getting. He wasn't getting glitches. I was I was the one getting glitches. He was getting freezes, and then my other friend didn't really have any problems. So, but it's one of those things where when it happened to me, I wasn't sure if it was the game or my system. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I think it's the game. But um, I guess it was the game. Yeah. Um, when you're playing on an old 360, you know it could red ring at any point. So that's true. I yeah <laughs> I, I I I'm on my third Xbox at this point. When it, when it comes to Xboxes, and apparently there were some issues with the Xbox One as well, like a green screen of death. People were calling it. Oh no! Well, I'm gonna get a Wii U soon, and then I'll buy everything on that. Gotcha. So. Yeah, Wii U is pretty good um, for the most part, but um, this game is beautiful. Yeah, um, it looks fantastic. What What do you think of the progressive um, like armor and cape damage? Like you know, these games always do. Oh, I guess I didn't think too much about it this time. Um, I don't remember it feeling as ragged as when you get to the end of Arkham City, and I'm like, there's so many holes in this cape, how am I going? Well, there, there are a bunch of holes in his cape by the end for me. Um, like, there, uh, yeah, it was another thing where it was like, how is this flying? There's no way I'm gliding. Um, right but I liked how, um, like, it got really scratchy. I mean, it was scratchy to begin with. Like, it had, like, uh, marks on it, and so you could see, like, the metal finish under under the, I guess, scratches. Um, yeah, that, that was kind of an interesting, different way to do it. Um, but uh, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, th- yeah, I mean, no, no, the attention to detail is really good. I'm, I'm also liking um, the skins, and I need to get some more of them, but I thought it was really cool that you got Noel at the end. Oh, I, I, I didn't, I didn't check, uh, check the new skins that I've unlocked yet. I just had the million dollar whatever. When you uh, get to the end of the story, you unlock the uh, Batman Noel skin, which uh, is a great graphic novel if you've never read no, it. No, um, I haven't. Uh, Noel was by Lee Bermejo, who is one of my favorite artists, mm-hmm. and uh, he it turns out the man can write too. Uh, he wrote he wrote and drew that, and um, it's it is uh, a a Batman Christmas story, and it's it's uh, it's this really cool paralleling thing with the Scrooge story, and uh, he has a special suit in that, and uh, so I thought it was really appropriate. You get to the end of this game and you're doing this Christmas thing and you get the Noel suit. I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. And apparently, um, some of the DLC, and I haven't gotten any of it yet, apparently you can get the Adam West suit. Oh, really? And I really want to play it like that, because that's hilarious. Um, That would be so funny. The only thing that would make it better would be if you could actually have Adam West saying all all those lines. Yeah. Verbatim, the same lines. Verbatim. Well, that's (laughs) that's something like... um, Arkham Origins is something that has so many pre-rendered cutscenes in it that... um, yeah. You you like in the actual story you wouldn't really see him doing much of it, <laughs> unfortunately. No, in that that's suit. no, that's that's true. But um... it'd be hilarious to see him like you know talking to the Joker in a cutscene in the Adam West outfit. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was possible to you know easily make all the pre-rendered cutscenes have whatever the skins were. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I don't. I, I haven't looked into into too many of the others. Um, but I thought it was neat that they did skins again because. Uh, that was one of the things people loved about Arkham City was that you could do the Batman Beyond suit and 
Yeah, yeah. Well, the ar the armored edition automatically comes with all that stuff. You don't have to buy the DLC or anything. So. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So I, I I've taken turns playing through like since I was trying to get 100%, I was just taking turns playing with the different costumes each time, like the Semestro corpse and stuff like that, and just it's it's a blast. Yeah, I, I really like the 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 animated series one looks pretty goofy. But like the Batman Beyond one looks awesome, but the animated series definitely look, it, it stands out kind of weird because it's like he has this big huge chin, and it doesn't necessarily fit with the serious tone. Of the game. But one of the things that uh, and this is going to sound awful. Um, one of the things I really got out of this when I got to the end was just I want to I want to go back and play Arkham City some more. Yeah, oh, really. Yeah, and I mean, not that I wouldn't continue playing this, but I mean, like, I guess the thing is, I never 100% at Arkham City because I, I have no attention span when it comes to video games, mm -hmm. and I'm not I'm not good at making myself go back and get things. Um, I'll, I'll try to get a, Rid a Riddler trophy for 10 minutes and be like, no. Yeah. Um, so, like, I finished this, and I went, because uh, this game is so big that I got to the end, and, you know, we were talking about this with Arkham City, that, like, you finish it, and it's, like, 38%, and you're like, oh, my God, yeah. there's still that much to do. I got to the end of this, and it was, like, 28 or something, and I was like, what? There's still that much? And so the first thing I thought was, well, I better go 100% Arkham City. <laughs> <laughs> this um I, I do i do want to do all the side missions and finish it though what did you think of the anarchy stuff well the anarchy stuff i thought was i mean it was pretty much just going to point from you know one point. It, it was it was kind of like a mixture between the zazz stuff from arkham city and like just bomb defusal so i just have to go fight people to defuse the bomb and i thought his boss fight was kind of lackluster yeah it was what i thought was really funny about it and i don't know if you did this did you stand there and listen to him talk? No, I just decked him. Okay, if you ran, if you ran off, what you don't know is that he has pages upon pages of dialogue. I figured as much. He just keeps going. I stood there to see when he would, when when he would, uh, uh, at, at at some point, like start either stop talking or just go into a loop. Mm -hmm. I ultimately ended up having to leave. It was still new when I left. Like. <laughs> keeps talking he just has this this tirade where he's like he's talking in circles not in, but not not an actual loop he just like like talking like he's in circles. Circular arguments yeah and and like he's he's uh he is talking about his whole philosophy and about how how um how Batman is is uh is ultimately like you know um um anti anarchy anarchy but then he was but, but then like he changes his mind at one point and he's still trying to get Batman to work with him but then he's like no never mind you're horrible and uh, it, no it's hilarious like he was still going when I it was like five minutes he was still talking I liked how they tied his kind of philosophy into the whole the we are the ninety nine percent thing like. That was kind of funny yeah. when that was happening with the, his henchmen. Well, and that's the thing is that he, he, he talks about that a lot more. When, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he's, was, yeah, I thought that was really funny. Yeah. What did you think of the um, the random, like, uh, henchmen chatter comparative to Arkham City? Um, I thought that some of it was, uh, was, was fun. I thought it was well written, um, but it looped too much. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I heard a lot of the same <laughs> stuff. Did you have the same thing? Yeah, I, I heard too much of the same stuff, and um, I thought that there was some some kind of stereotypical video game stuff, particularly when you're on the uh, penguin ship, and you I uh, I just remembered this, and and you I uh, put that that one lady, that hench lady, um, uh, in, you lock her in a room, mm -hmm. and she's and she's like um she's like let me out and stuff. Um, if you stand there too long, she has three lines she says, yeah. and she keeps <laughs> repeating them in succession. Yep, I know. And, it's yeah, I, I I like Arkham Asylum and Arkham City did better about that. Yep. Um, they 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 had fewer repeated lines and it and, and it was a lot more organic. Um, it, it you felt a lot more like you were in a real situation and like you weren't in a pre-programmed video game thing. Um, this game did it really well in some places, yeah. but not in others. And you're right, I heard a lot of the same chatter. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of it, yeah, that was something to kind of that it's it's it's. It's funny how you mentioned, like, you know, it's it's a game that makes you want to either play or it makes you think about Arkham City a lot. Like, you're just thinking about how great Arkham City was when you're playing it, which isn't a bad and, thing, but... And, and again, I'm not... 
I had, like I said, I had a lot of negative things to say. I'm not disappointed. Far from it. This game had so much more than I expected. Because, like I said, I thought it was going to be like this little interim, you know, uh, get your palette wet for the Arkham franchise until we make the real Arkham Three. Yeah. And so it's it's so much bigger than I thought it would be. Um, and and there, I mean, there's there's some really clever stuff here. I just, um, but it does it does have, uh, you know, you know, numerous problems. Yeah. What do you think of the whole um, Gordon uh, Batman dichotomy going on? Um, I, I I loved everything about. Them. Yeah, I I loved I I liked how both of them were com- like pretty mistrusting of each other, and it really took Alfred pushing Batman, and it took you know Batman pushing Gordon. Like I, I loved that. I mean, Gordon <laughs> Gordon didn't open that last door, and like I like that he they both kind of had to make mistakes in order to trust each other. Yeah, that was great, and I also like that they don't like full on um, totally trust each other right at the end too. Oh yeah, he wanted to um, arrest him still. Yeah, because like I said, too much of the Joker thing happens in one night, and it would have been really bad if too much of the Gordon thing happened in one night. Yeah. I, I think that that was a place where they did a really good job of making it feel natural. Because uh, boy, the last thing I would have wanted would be you get to the end and Gordon puts up a bat signal or something. Oh, that was a thing I didn't like. I get that in Arkham City, the bat signal is there so that it'll it can it'll help you figure out where you're supposed to go. Yeah. There shouldn't have been one in this. Yeah, game. I didn't even think about that. I literally didn't even think about that. I uh, as soon as I saw it, I was like, "But Batman doesn't get along with the police." I get it's just there for your benefit. Yes. I get it, but you have to pretend like it's not actually there gameplay wise, and it's part of the aesthetic. It looks like it's there. I, uh, I wish I wish they could have come up with something else. Yeah, that's true. I don't know what you would have used, but I I don't either. That, yeah, now that I'm thinking about it, that shouldn't have been there. I didn't even think about that honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, what well, by the end of this, it doesn't feel like. I mean, it, it definitely feels like it's like, okay, there's going to be another Arkham Rocksteady game coming out after this that takes place after Arkham City. Right. But it really feels like they're going to, or at least that they're set up to do another prequel story. Because um, they, they set up a lot of stuff. You Like you said, you aren't complete with Gordon. Um, there's some stuff that didn't carry over to uh, the other games yet, like Cobblepot having the glass in his eye and stuff like that. And like it, it's it. I mean, I understand this is a prequel, but I figured we might see that in this. Um, and the whole Suicide Squad thing with, with Deathstroke, I don't know if they're setting that up for the next Arkham game or if they're going to do another prequel thing with that. Like, I don't know. They're setting up future story threads inside a prequel. so it's, Yeah, you're right. I didn't think about it like that. Maybe they're doing that on purpose just in case they want to do more prequels. Yeah. Um, do you get the sense that they're setting this up as a, a franchise-wise so that we get them a lot more often. Oh, I de- well, that was the thing was I, I kind of started off like 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 we're saying earlier with uh, with Assassin's Creed. And stuff. Assassin's Creed, yeah, that's the way they did it. Where it was it was almost exactly like kind of what's happening right now. Where the first game was really well critically appraised and people really liked it, and then they spent two or three years made Assassin's Creed two completely refined all of the problems from the first one, really well praised thing, and then. Ever since then, they've done a game a year where they've traded off between studios. Um, so I really, I feel like that's probably where they're going with this, um, where they'll have, U- or not Ubisoft, well, they'll have Warner Brothers Montreal trade off with Rocksteady probably. Because Warner Brothers Interactive, before Arkham City came out, they bought Rocksteady. So they, I mean, obviously they had the property in the first place, but um, they bought Rocksteady. So, I mean, I, I really see them probably doing this, where it's like every year we're probably going to get a Batman game. Um, and I... um, because they have access to the entire DC universe, they have a really good chance here at <laughs> at making at making it not feel redundant yeah. if they do every year. I, I don't. I mean, th- my my first gut reaction is don't oversaturate it like that. Yeah. My second, more sober reaction is use some different characters and don't always make them Batman games. They won't do that because the Arkham name is what they think they'll have to use to sell this. But what they ought to do is one year give us a Green Arrow game, man, and another year give us somebody else, you know? Yeah. Um, they ought to do a, a straight-up Catwoman game. I, that, that's what they really ought to be doing with this. Keep the uh, I, the engine as, 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 as close as you can with modifications for whatever the character mm-hmm. is. But um, now, once you get into superpower characters, it gets a lot harder. Um, you, you, yeah. couldn't, you couldn't really use these mechanics for a flash game or a superman game but uh but at least for your street level stuff um 
you know, you, you could, uh, instead of just putting out a Batman game every year, you could put out a DC game every year, and I think that it wouldn't feel as redundant. Yeah. That's what they should do. That's not what they'll yeah, do. Yeah, I know. I was about to say, that's probably not what they'll do, but... I'm being realistic. That's... <laughs> But that's what they should do. Yeah, it. I mean, I I agree. Uh, definitely should like spread it out a bit more, so you're not getting like, oh, another Batman game, and it doesn't get diluted and doesn't get oversaturated. All you hear the fans talk about all the time is, boy, Rocksteady is great. I wish they'd do other characters. People are constantly saying that. They're they're constantly saying Rocksteady needs to make the because we've never had a good Superman yep. game. Rocksteady needs to make that now. I don't know that, that that makes any sense because, yeah, they're a great studio, but you couldn't use this engine. It would have to be something, you know, it would have to be a different a yeah. different set of it, mechanics. But um, but I see what they're saying. They're like, well, they, they, they invented something for Batman. Let's see them invent something for Yeah, Superman. I mean, take the same kind of mindset going in. It's like, what would make sense for a Batman game? And, like, go in with that. Because, I mean, that's, that's pretty much what they did with Arkham Asylum was, like, what – works gameplay wise and story wise to do for batman and they've there was, delivered there was all this talk a couple of years ago about uh, a, a justice league prequel and then we ended up getting this instead um i wonder if justice league is still on the table yeah i mean i'd i'd really be interested to see i mean because they've made reference to you know other superheroes and stuff like that in this game like or in these games um because yeah. they've, they've mentioned metropolis and stuff like that and I'd love to see it expand to a greater universe to to maybe like yeah like you said have have kind of not a similar engine if it if it comes to different characters recreate different engines but like see them come together at some point like in in these games I don't know and I mean I don't need to I don't need to see a huge expansive universe but I guess what I'm saying is if we got to have one every year let's let's have some variety because you're in the right world for variety yeah and if you're going to do a Batman game, stop making Joker the highlight. <laughs> yeah, at least some other villains, because we've got them, and you've used them, and, but yeah, no, no, you're at, you're absolutely right. Um, a lot of people think because they went Joker here that they don't think they can sell a Batman game without the Joker, and that they're going to immediately resurrect them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what they're doing with the next Arkham game. I really hope they don't do that. I gotta say, I am really impressed by Hush Hush they by how Hush they, Hush they've been because oh, yeah. um, oh. I think, and I might be totally wrong about this, Dan. Um, I think the reason we got Origins now, I I do think you're right. Also, I think that they're that they're splitting it between two places because they want to do these every year. <laughs> but I think I think at the beginning, the reason that they the, the reason they decided to do Origins was because they wanted to have a lot longer to build a much bigger, more expansive game uh, for for uh, for for what I'm continuing to call Arkham 3. And uh, and I think that uh, that whatever their Arkham 3 is is going to be all of Gotham. I mean... I, and I think they've been working on it this entire time. Yeah. yeah. I, well, That's why... Well, I mean, if, if it was any indication between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, I mean, they were working on that, you know, pretty much the entire time between games, so definitely same same story here. I, I, like, I like the idea of them having three years for between each game or something like that yeah. that would be great because that's so much time to refine everything but if they switch on this one a year thing it would give rocksteady less time if they're the ones switching off um, well and if it's the same engine i mean i don't want to say these are too repetitive i really like the gameplay but these games are enormous like give me some time to finish one because yeah. not yeah. everybody finishes a game in four weeks like you know you, um you, or and you've also got some people that might finish a game in four weeks, but like they're not going to get excited to play another one right away. It, you know, you know, if you give them two or three years, they'll go, "Oh yeah, that was fun," and then they'll play another one. Yeah. Um, that's just I don't know. That that's how I feel about it. I I don't I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play these constantly. It, it would be it would be more fun to wait a while and then you know re, be reminded why I loved it so much. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it's interesting that if it weren't for Kevin Conroy's slip up. Um, we wouldn't know anything about the next Rocksteady Batman game. He is notorious for that, by the <laughs> way. Slipping up? Uh, yeah. Well, well, I don't think he cares is the thing. <laughs> um, when, when, you, when you listen to him, he's just like, yeah, I'm working on this other thing, and oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> that's, that's his attitude. He's hilarious. Yeah. Um, he, he, uh, yeah, he mentioned that, and, and I think maybe it's been – Maybe both times it's been with Comic Book Club because I know he he meant with them he mentioned um, Flashpoint before that movie got oh, really? got 
was put out. Yeah, he was like, he was like, we're working on, I think it's called, uh, I don't know, Flashpoint. And then everybody's like, holy crap, they're making Flashpoint. And then they made Flashpoint. <laughs> and you're like, oh, all right. Uh, he wasn't supposed to mention that. And months before they were going to tell us anything, Kevin Conroy says Flashpoint. You think, and then I uh, think they did with said, some, some sort of penalties or something like that because he had to have signed some sort of NDA or something like that. Yeah, I don't know what the deal was. So then uh, with, with this, before Origins was even announced, he was like, I'm working on another video game. I, I don't know what it's called yet. Oh, God. Well, it, the, the whole the whole origins thing was it came out and everybody was like, "Is it is he still the voice of Batman?" And he was like, he he tweeted out, he was like, "Everybody, don't worry, I'm still voicing Batman." And then, yeah. and then the origins people came out and said, "No, it's it's uh, Roger Craig Smith." And you know, and then he was like, uh, "Oh wait, hold on, I'm working on another game." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think he even knew about Origins. No, he didn't. It was hilarious. He thought they announced the other Batman game. Uh, that's why I. That's why I'm saying I think they're taking a full four years on this one. Yeah, yeah, I hope they do. I think they started working on it the day after Arkham City came <coughs> out, put out Origins so that they could work on that for four years. Yeah. But we'll see when it gets announced. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, I mean, we don't. We, we still don't know exactly what this is going to be, and I, I couldn't guess what it's going to be. Like, I really don't know where they're going to go with it still, after all this time. Uh, yeah, well, it, we can we can be sure of a couple things. We can be sure Deathstroke is in it. Oh yeah, yeah. If they... Whatever happens, Deathstroke is in it, and probably huge somehow, like a, like a, like a major thing. Um, you can be sure Bane will be there someplace because they love they love their Bane. Well, Bane was such a small thing in Arkham City. Like he was just a random side mission. Yeah, but he was, you know, he, but, but Arkham Asylum was built all around him. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think they'll probably use him again. Yeah. Um, well, and, you know, now that, now that I think about it, it is kind of fun that they had Joker and Bane team up because Joker and Bane were the two most important things in Arkham Asylum also. They just didn't team up together. That's true. Yeah, with the whole Titan thing. and Yeah. Um, yeah. So set up Titan pretty well. I, I'd love to see, I yeah, oh, yeah, the, the T1 thing. Yeah, they did a pretty good uh, job with that. Well, because 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 uh, because Bane, I like by the way that Bane is like is like working on his own substance. I think that's kind of fun because mm-hmm. we have we have the smart Bane. Yeah, and so like you know, like he he's refining his own drug, and I don't know. I think that's fun. Yeah, um, I would like to see Two Face in a much bigger role. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Could we just maybe I don't know uh, do a whole game based around Two Face. That'd be good. I, that would be very good. I'd, li- I'd that was one of my big complaints with Arkham City is that uh, they they advertised the crap out of Two Face and then he was not anything like important. They um, they teased him a little bit in Arkham Origins. I think there was one point where Gordon was talking to Harvey Dent, or maybe he was yeah, talking. Yeah, okay, yeah, he was talking to Dent, right? I think Harvey Dent is there. Okay. Yeah, or at least talked about, but he's not Two Face yet. No, no, that's that's yeah. why if they did another prequel, I'd actually kind of like to see. The origin of Two Face. Yeah, sure. If they, if yeah. they did a long Halloween sort of thing, which they had, they had um, uh, what's his name, Falcone, um, Car- Carmine, Carmine, Carmine Falcone. That was that was the son, right? Uh, no, Carmine's the father. It was it was the it was the son, and I can't remember his. Yeah, name. he was he was on Penguin's boat. He was being interrogated. Right. Uh, so yeah. I thought that, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of great lore. Uh, they they did a really good job of uh, of mining the material. Yeah, uh, yeah that's great. Um, can I ask you a question real quick before we go? Because we're we're up into an hour and a half already. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, sorry. Do you? Do, no, no, you're 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 cool. Um, do you think that it is possible to make this to to do two player co op with this engine? Hmm. Could it ever happen? Like the Batman and Robin thing. Yeah. Well, the problem with um, well, because it's open world, so there's there's definitely an avenue to do that. But yeah, it would, it would have to be a thing where both players would have to be together to trigger missions and stuff like that. I think I think it could work if they did Batman and Robin. I really think they could do that, um, and that would be actually really fun. Because I really wonder if that's not where they're, where they're going. Uh, given that they they made a big deal out of there's other characters in city. Yeah. And you know the play as Catwoman thing, um, and and I wonder if maybe that's not a mechanic they're working Have on. Have you played online at all for Arkham Origins? No, I heard bad things about the online. Okay, well they have they have a mode where it's it's three versus three versus Batman and Robin, yeah. and and that's pretty interesting. I think that's a, I mean that could be maybe a precursor to that sort of thing. Um, maybe. Because it's, it's it's a pretty cool dynamic where you have the, the, the two different ground forces, Joker and Bane, people going after each other, and then you have Batman and Robin t- taking them out, like taking everyone out. Um, it's it's a pretty cool thing, um, but it's, it's kind of not 
crazy well balanced because there's only so many places you could sneak as Batman and Robin and you're up in the rafters and people know to look up there so it's not like the game where they don't really know to look at the <laughs> at the gargoyles oh yeah good point but um <laughs> but it, I, that would be that would be insanely fun and if they did that that'd be really ambitious and I think really cool but then you have the the issue of you're probably going to have to develop two either separate campaigns or because either that or have Robin an AI Robin running around with you, which would be kind of... Mm, which could be really irritating. Which could be very bad. So either have a completely dedicated co-op uh, campaign where it's a separate thing that happens during the story or something like that or before the story. Or maybe even after. No, you probably have to do it before because people probably yeah. want to jump right out of the gate to play it. Um, so it would probably have to be that where where the prequel it would be a prequel co-op campaign where it all takes place before the story happens um but uh, yeah either that or you just have co-op when you do side stuff yeah but even that could be murky because that's because because those have cut scenes and are kind of campaigny yeah yeah that'd be i mean it, it, they would have to overcome some hurdles there but it, it's not like unheard of like splinter cell I would games be a little surprised if they weren't if they weren't trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah, I mean, that that's something that kind of happens in, in um, Splinter Cell. Uh, the, the newest game, they have co-op that's that's mission-based co-op, but it's all, since the game is an open world, if it was linear, it's absolutely easier to do. Yeah. Um, because they, they make the co-op missions things that aren't consequential to the story so much. I mean, it, it helps you if you do it because it gives you extra stuff, but you don't have to do it in order to play the main campaign. At the very least, I bet in the next one we get other characters besides Catwoman where, where they would do other campaigns. Like split-offs? Uh, kind of yeah. Thing. Uh, other, other split-offs. Yeah, that um, would be pretty fun. Well, one of the one of the things people complain about a lot, and I, and I, and I, and I did too with, with Arkham City, was they had to contrive a reason for none of the sidekicks to be there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you know, they put them in the challenge maps, but you're like, well, why can't I play as Nightwing or Robin? And so um, I, I imagine they'll probably get, like, their own little bits of things to do. Yeah. If they don't do co-op. Oh, another thing I, I forgot to mention was uh, also the whole prequel thing where I, I think they might do another prequel thing is the Barbara Gordon is an Oracle yet. She isn't even Batgirl yet. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's back far enough that she's she's got to be pre-Oracle and pre-Batgirl. Um, I liked... Uh, I liked her role in that quite a bit. Yes, I did too. Um, especially because it was a nice precursor for Oracle and not just Batgirl. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really fun that she, uh, you know, taps into Batman's comms yeah. and that she's already pretty savvy at computers and stuff. That was great. Um, especially because, I mean, I was surprised they went there because uh, a lot of non-comic DC things right now are touting 52 super, super hard. And uh, Barbara Gordon is not... Uh, uh, Oracle anymore in, in 52. She's Batgirl, and she doesn't seem to do as much tech stuff as she, as she used to do. So, um, like, like I'm glad that this being still still Arkhamverse, that they're not tied to that, and they're able to still do the, the, the you know, set up the stuff for the Arkhamverse they did later, because mm -hmm. she, need, she needs to be good at that stuff. That, that's important. Yeah. So that's good, uh, but no, I thought that was cool, and uh, I don't know, I don't know if uh, she was the same voice or a different voice. It, I didn't it sounded up. like her. Um, she sounded really similar. Let's see here. But I thought she was great. Yeah, um, I believe so. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. Oh, let's see, Barbara, they're coming to get you, Barbara. <laughs> you know what that's from? Oh, I should. It's not coming to me right uh, now. What's it called? Uh, Night of the Living Dead. I'm like, you don't even know. Yeah, Night of the Living <laughs> Dead. Uh, no, it's a different voice. Oh, different voice sure. actress. Oh, okay. Well, uh, she got close. She was in one. Same, same Harley Quinn, though. Same Harley Quinn and same, you know, Penguin and such. So a lot of, yeah. a lot of returning yeah. people, but... Yeah, I'm glad they had a lot of returning people. Yeah. Um, I think that helped to give them some credibility, too, because so many people were like, oh, man, you're changing everything. No, they just wanted some younger-sounding voices. Yep. Absolutely. Well, Dan, did you have anything else you wanted to mention? Um, I feel like we we went, we were pretty thorough. Yeah, we went we went I, we hit all the points I wanted to hit really. Um, uh, much longer than the Arkham City podcast, but then again, we had a lot to talk about with this. Um, well, Arkham City was mostly gushing. Yeah, yeah, we were well, we, we were both just off of like for the most part just off that because uh, I had beat it that day before we did it, and then yeah. you had beat it recently around that time too. So, um, but yeah. I don't know. Before I, before we go, I, I just wanted to say uh, 
I hope you you keep doing what you're doing with this channel and I've always been a big supporter and and I, I really love this this the stuff you do on here and just wanted to throw that out there that I, I love your content and I thank you for having me on again. Oh well thanks Dan. I appreciate it, man. I thank you for all your help and, and I mean, you know, everything you've done for us in the last few years. Oh, yeah, no problem. I, I enjoy it because I love I love seeing your guys' content. It, it's only grown. Like I I started watching your stuff like what, two and a half years ago, three years ago almost at this point. So <laughs> like it's you guys have grown leaps and bounds and it's awesome to see you guys grow even more. Well, thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, you're, uh, why, don't, why don't you uh, plug uh, stuff you're doing at, at uh, Creature Hub and such? Uh, YouTube.com slash the Creature Hub for all your creature <laughs> needs. Uh, no, I, 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 have a, I have a collaborative channel that I, that I do um, uh, called the Creature Hub. And, and we do skits and fun gameplay stuff. And there's some Batman stuff in there, too, if you're interested in Batman. I have a character called Bat Dance. Bat Dance. Yes. Uh, where... Uh, <laughs> Recently at, at San Diego Comic Con, I went around walking in the in the full Batman suit, just going around being an idiot, having having my two friends try to, in competition, see who's the best Robin. So they're walking around in like cheesy Robin outfits, and it, it's it's a it's always fun and weird stuff that we have up there. So check that out if you'd like. But thank you for that. Well, uh, everybody, thanks as always for listening. And uh, Dan, uh, come back again soon. M make it not two, two whole not years. Not two years and one month and 14 hours and 10 minutes and 52 seconds. <laughs> that's, that's creepy. I don't know about that. Uh, well, but... you know, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> counting. I'm going to start the timer for the next time I'm on. <laughs> Oh, and also, uh, if you if you want to if you want to watch Dan, um, you know you know play Arkham Origins better than me. He's got a lot of it uploaded. Yes, it's uh, it's almost all completely up. So, cool beans. Well, thanks again, folks. Uh, we'll see you later. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Dan Zeus. <laughs> Bye.